say, why do we have that mind, or why do we have the ego, why is, is a question of purpose. Like, what's the purpose, really what you're asking, what's the purpose of the ego? The purpose of the ego is death. It's a death wish, uh, like Freud called, called it Thanatos. Does it have any helpful purpose? Does it have any purpose at all? It could be just the slightest bit good? No, it doesn't. It's a death wish. Pure and simple a death wish. Uh, it's not real, but if you believe in it, you make it real in awareness. It's not real. It, it doesn't have any reality. Sometimes people will ask me, um, well, everything seems to have a source. So what was the source of the ego? Where did it come from? That's another version of why, why the ego. And I say it doesn't. It doesn't have a source. Uh, it's, you know, it's talk about a wild child or a bastard child. Uh, it, it has no source. And, of course, because the source of of all, and the source of reality is love. And you don't get death from love. There, there, death is not a creation of love. Love is life. Life is eternal. Life is spirit. And the ego made up a world where it, it invents birth and death. It invents time cycles. It invents gradations and degrees. But the ego has no purpose no healing purpose, and the ego has no source. And with that, the next thing comes in is, the only thing that, that this journey is about is unplugging from the ego, unplugging from the death wish, because it has no purpose. Uh, now why, why did this world come into existence? Sometimes we can listen to romantic songs and love songs, and love makes the world go round, and you know, it's a wonderful world and all kinds of different things. Uh, it's not love that spins this world. Uh, it, this is a world that's, that's a projection of fear and guilt and hatred and anger. And even if you look out at the natural world, you know, we can all get together and, and watch, uh, like the Lion King, you know, in the circle. Circle of life. You know, we could do our, our little cartoon things and everything, but, but actually, when you come out into the jungle, what do you find? Wild pigs. You're making a pathway and the wild pigs knock the stones over. Or snakes and spiders and... Some of you might have years ago heard of this guy named Marlon Perkins that would go around and, and <laughs> film. He wasn't showing us Lion King stuff. In the circle of life, it was chomp, chomp, chomp. You could, you could title Marlon Perkins his films, chomp, chomp, chomp. Everything's eating everything else. It's like a world of cannibalism, you know? Everything's eating everything. And the stronger ones seem to survive a little longer. And then chomp, they get chomped by something else. Or a tsunami comes along and chomps a bunch of everything, you know? So basically, the hatred, the fear, the anger is what made this world, and the spirit is here to reinterpret our perception of the world. It was made in hate, but, but love has the power to reinterpret it. And that's why we're working on perception, getting a, a different interpretation of the world, learning how to be in the world but not of it, how to see the world differently, how to perceive it differently, is really what it's about. So. It's a good question. I, I think that's one of those questions that have to be asked. You know, like what is the purpose of the ego? Where did it come from? And then, finally, I call that the number one question that I get asked. I've been doing this for 20 years. The number one question I get asked is, how did this happen in the first place? If God is such perfect love, if reality is just all love and oneness and happiness and joy and freedom, how did this happen in the first place? And there's a concept in The Course of Miracles called atonement. And a synonym for the word atonement, which just sounds like a very religious term, a Christian kind of term, a synonym for atonement is correction. Ah. 
So if this world is a seeming error, then the correction is the atonement. And what is the atonement but the awareness that the separation never happened. The separation never happened. Ah, duh! Of course, that would have to be the, the solution. We all know this in our hearts. We know that the correction has to be that the separation is impossible. And so theologically, when ego asks the question, how did this happen in the first place? Jesus says in the back of his book, he says, the ego will ask many questions that this Course has no answer for. How did the impossible happen? To whom did the impossible happen? And many versions. But he does say, an experience will come that will end your doubting. He says, there is an experience, an experience that it is the experience that the separation never happened. It's just an experience of pure love, in which there is no ego. Of course, if the ego is a denial of love, if it's a death wish, it can't have a reality. And in the end, when people ask me, why are you so happy all the time? You know, what is it? Is it your good bodily health? Is it because you've got a lot of money in the bank? Good investments? Is it uh, you got a great love life, uh, like, uh, what's that movie with Johnny Depp, Juan, Don Juan DeMarco? Is it, what is the reason for your happiness? It's the atonement. It's the correction. Of course, the correction would be what happiness is. And that's really all A Course in Miracles, is it's guiding us to, to the correction. In fact, there's a great line in the Course where where Jesus says, this is a great one, he says, you are not responsible for the error, you are only responsible for accepting the correction for the error. Isn't that lovely? Can you see how that will free your mind of guilt? You're not responsible for the error, for whatever you think you did, or you didn't do, that you should have done. Whatever the error is, you are responsible for accepting the correction. He also goes on to say is, do not attempt to project the error to the world, to the world of form. Every time we scapegoat, every time we blame, every time we point the finger and we say, oh, I would be happy if, if this hadn't happened. Or if only I had done this, if only I was smart enough to realize to do this or that, I would be happy. He's saying, don't project the error to the world because you keep it by trying to project it away. By trying to get rid of it by projecting it, you actually are keeping your mind stuck in quicksand. You're stuck in it. Like fly in, in, on flypaper, you're stuck there. When you forgive it, when you release it from inside of you, you release it, the world, you release the entire world with you. So that's why forgiveness works. When other attempts at trying to fix people, change people, change circumstances, make the world a better place, you know, all of those things are destined to just be delay maneuvers to the ultimate inner correction.